لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتم واتقوا الله إن الله تواب الرحيم وعن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله أي المسلمين أفضل قال من فلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, suspected elders, brothers Amongst the favors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us The favors which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us upon is the speech The favor of speech May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a tongue The nearness of the tongue is so great that many a times we use the tongue for good deeds like reading Quran making our salah for our azkar, for our zikr we use the tongue for many good reasons as well as advising people giving advice to people, motivating people we use our tongue for certain good reasons also as well as this very same tongue if it is abused then it becomes the seal of shaitan we are the tongue that with that very same tongue which we did good, which we read Quran, which we uh, make our salah, with that very same tongue there is dispute between communities, there is dispute between, there is argument between families, between inside the families, why? Because of this very same tongue. That is why the hadith of Nabi alayhi salam which comes in Sayyid Hadith Sharif that Nabi alayhi salam said every day the organs of the body it pleads to the tongue and it says O oh tongue, you remain straight, then we will remain straight If you are crooked, then we will also be crooked And it is obvious, a person speaks about walking to a wrong place and then automatically the leg it walks, it, the leg it takes to that wrong place A person uh, thinks that I, a person starts speaking about looking at something which is unlawful, something which is haram at that moment the, the ear, the eyes, it makes amal and it practices upon what the speech or forgotten the speech of the tongue so that is why Nabi alayhi salam, has, uh, Nabi alayhi salam said that every day the tongue it pleads uh, it pleads, every day the organs of the body it pleads to the tongue and it says that you should keep away from you should guide us and you should be straight if you are straight then we will also be straight a hadith of Nabi alayhi salam is referring to where Nabi alayhi salam said Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yakul khayra aw liyasmud mustafaqun alayhi Where Nabi alayhi salam said that a person who has iman and a person who brings iman upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment then he should always speak good Otherwise he should keep quiet Another hadith of Nabi alayhi salam Man kamata faqad najab Nabi alayhi salam said, he who keeps quiet, then he will gain salvation. The hadith of Nabi alayhi salam, it expresses and explains to us that what, what is important, we should speak. And what is not important, what we decide, what is, will not benefit for us, we should keep away from these things. Another hadith of Nabi alayhi salam, لا تفسر الكلام بغير ذكر الله فإن كثرة الكلام بغير ذكر الله كفة للقلب a person when he is speaking, he should speak with the zikr of, with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there in his speech, then excessive speech by futile, which is not relevant, which is, uh, which will not benefit excessively when a person speaks regarding things which is not beneficial, then a person, Nabi alayhi salam said, Saswatul lil his heart will become hard. His heart will become hard in a such a way that in spirituality his heart will become hard. We understand from this how important in one way the tongue it is important that we use it for certain good reasons and also that very same tongue which can be abused also in hurting people, in making problems between families, that very same tongue can happen. Among, from the tongue, uh, one of the major and one of the things which commonly takes place of, of, uh, amongst us is backbiting, that is the ghiba. Ghiba which takes place commonly amongst us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا 
do not backbite among one another and also the hadith of nabi alayhi salam it refers to what is the definition of backbiting how did nabi alayhi salam explain backbiting in muslim sharif the hadith comes atadaruna mal ghaiba nabi alayhi salam asked the sahaba atadaruna mal ghaiba do you know what is ghaiba do you know what is backbiting the sahaba replied only allah and allah's rasul know what is backbiting nabi alayhi salam explained qala dhikruka aqata bima yakrahu that is to speak something about your muslim brother which if he hears it he will be upset so nabi alayhi salam explains that to speak something about your brother if he hears it if he hears it refers to that he is not present at that moment so if he hears it he will become upset this is that by thing certain times we would say that i am ready to speak that very same thing in front of that person so that is a, another situation that is something else but here we talking about speaking about that your own brother your own particular muslim brother speaking bad about him and if he hears it he will feel bad then the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala an majmain they asked nabi alayhi salam ya rasulullah what is what we are speaking it is true about that person we are saying that that person is a liar we are saying that that person is a person who deceives what is we are speaking it is true then nabi alayhi salam said yes that is that by thing that is back by thing which you are speaking about that particular person if you are speaking something which that person does not have then you are lying about that person that is even more worse than back by thing so if you are speaking about that person that is that is only back by thing that is what you are speaking something which he has in him and if he hears it he will feel upset he will feel worried this is how nabi alayhi salam explained furthermore nabi alayhi salam explained al mustami'u ahadul mustabid even the person who listens a person who listens he is not speaking bad but he is in a he is in a gathering where two people are speaking bad or speaking uh, 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 bad about a person he is listening to it he says i did not speak but he is listening to it he is also among those people who are that biting and who are also engaged themselves in ghaibat and also nabi alayhi salam said those certain times we gesture a person that is we say that that person is a short person he is not an educated person like that we say about a person a quality of a person we put him down and we speak bad about him that also includes into that by him so commonly nabi alayhi salam explains that whenever any kind of speech where if your brother he has to hear it he will feel worried he will get worried with that by him also nabi alayhi salam explained about namima namima is that nabi alayhi salam said in one hadith la yadkhulu al-jannata namamun that is a person who listens to someone else's speech he takes that speech and go and tell it to someone else you see this person has spoken like this and that very same speech what he says he takes it and go and tell it uh, he go and speak it to someone else so nabi alayhi salam said that person who is engaged himself in namima he will also not enter into jannah now after understanding the definition of backbiting let us see what are the harm of backbiting what are the harm what will harm a person by backbiting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran ayuhibbu ahadukum ay yaqula lahma akhihi maytan fakaristum the person who backbites it is like that that person he is eating his own uh, biological brother's flesh the sense of his a person obviously we don't accept at all of eating a uh, a uh, 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 flesh of a man but here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that very same uh, a person who is that fighting it is like he is eating the own flesh of his own by his own brother so a harm that which will anyone is not ready to accept we are by that fighting and also our ulama they explain that when a person engages himself in that fighting then it will become difficult for him to think, to uh, do good deeds he will feel lazy he will not want to do good deeds he will not want to engage himself in good deeds because why excessively he is that biting because of small small because of a certain uh, uh, because of certain sins a person's heart becomes black so because of this doesn't think he doesn't want to do amal he doesn't want to engage himself in ibadat so this is also a half where our ulama explain that by a person that biting he will not engage he will feel lazy he will not want to engage himself in ibadat also at the time of miraj nabi alayhi salam at the time of miraj nabi alayhi salam so certain people who were scraping their faces with with nails with their with their, with their nails in their hands they were scraping their 
uh, faces Nabi alayhi salam required Nabi alayhi salam asked Jibreel alayhi salam who are these people Nabi, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam explained Ya'kuluna lakum and nas They are the people who used to eat the flesh of the people that is they used to backbite So the harm where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishment has kept even in afterwards in even the afterah of a person who is backbiting And not only that we have to understand that when a person backbites and when a person speaks bad ill about another person another major harm is his good deeds will be taken away from him and given to that particular person and his deeds will be taken and there will be a transfer of deeds there we know the famous hadith of Nabi alayhi salam asked who is a bankrupt person the, no, the sahaba they, they replied a bankrupt person is that person who does not have dinar or that, that person does not have dirham Nabi alayhi salam said no that is not the person a person will come on the day of qiyamah he will have lots of amal with him he has done lot of ibadah with him but then another person will come and say this person used to backbite about me he used to scold me he used to hurt me so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take all of these one by one of his good deeds and give to this particular person and these bad deeds will be taken and given to this particular person who used to backbite so it is that our good deeds Hassan Basir rahimahullah it is said that when, per- when people speak bad about him he will, give, he will send them sweet place why? saying to that person that you are sending your good deeds to me so it is that it is a major uh, uh, thing that where it happens when a person backbites he is giving his good deeds to that person and that person's bad deeds are coming to us so let us keep away from this and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us now after understanding after understanding the definition of backbiting and the harms of backbiting let us see why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it haram why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it prohibited backbiting few reasons backbiting it takes place one is when a person wants to take revenge from someone else he has done something his, his brother or he is, his Muslim brother has done something wrong to him in order to take revenge with him so this person will backbite he will talk ill about him, he will talk bad about him because his intention is to take revenge from that person also another reason why he will backbite is when they get together just for uh, ideal curiosity a person will backbite three or four people they get together after in a, in a restaurant or after a lunch or after a dinner they get together, they speak together and then they talk about, cert- about a certain community about a certain company they will start talking bad about so where it is not, it is not, they are not gaining any kind of benefit but three or four of them get together, they sit and just for ideal curiosity just to gain a little bit of pleasure about speaking about gossip about those people he, they, they engage himself in backbiting and also another reason where a person engages himself in backbiting is a person sometimes he feels that I am better than that person I am better than that person. Keeping that into the, into the reason, he starts backbiting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a worse thing where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَا تُزَقُّوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ Don't regard yourself, don't regard yourself superior to someone else. We don't know our taqwa level. We don't know how much taqwa we have. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our taqwa level. So we cannot, or we cannot, any, any way, there is no possibility of, upon us that we think that I am superior than that person. Because we don't know who has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The taqwa of that person only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So when a person does not know, when a person thinks that I am more superior than that person, then he starts backbiting about that person. Because whatever the, whatever the uh, khidma, whatever the uh, service he is doing, he will start talking against it because he thinks I am more superior than that person. And also another reason where backbiting takes place is because of mainly looking at the faults of other people faults of your Muslim brother, faults of the community faults of each and everything, whatever every time when he opens his eyes he is only looking at the faults of that particular person whereas it is not possible, where we don't know how from where did we get the authority to look at the faults of another person when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has covered this ummah whatever the fault is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered we know the ummah before the um- what happened to Lut alayhi salam uh, uh, a nation what happened to Nuh alayhi salam's nation what happened to Adam alayhi salam's nation we know what are the punishments what kind of wrong they did and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told that, us, told that to us 
But what are the wrongs we are doing? No one knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it uh, uh, quiet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made it uh, uh, to be shown to everyone else. So in that, in that reason, where, where can we look at another person's fault and then tell him that, that you are doing this wrong, this person is doing that wrong. Where, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we see that previous nations, the charity, it comes in authentic hadiths, the charity which they used to give. What they used to do is they used to go and place it upon on top of a mountain. Then a fire will come and the whole charity will burn away. So then those charity which is not burned, then the people will understand that for oh, this person charity is not accepted in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our charity what we give, no one knows, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So everything which have which is upon what we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it quiet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not expose it to anyone. So where will we get the authority that to we go and expose another my Muslim brother's fault to someone else? And in certain reasons, there is in certain places there is permissibility. Our our scholars, Imam Nawi Rahmahullah has written, where in certain places it is permissible to uh, it is permissible to speak bad about or uh, speak uh, to do backbiting. It is permissible in those places where uh, a person has been uh, he has been tortured or uh, he has been stolen. His things have been stolen by someone, so he goes to the authority and complains about him that this person has done wrong to me. This person, we are speaking bad, but we are speaking that whatever my thing has been stolen or it has been touched by someone, so he's speaking to the authority so that it will return back to him. Or a person sees the uh, a person's son who is engaging himself in wrong, so he goes to the father and he says that you look here, your son is doing such and such wrong, so make him, uh, save him from all this wrong. So we are going to a person who has authority upon that person, where the father will go and advise the son and make him uh, keep away from uh, that kind of haram or that kind of wrong what the son is doing in that reason. There is responsibility. It is not possible for us to go and speak to everyone that the, this person's son is doing this wrong, this wrong. That is not, uh, it is not correct. That is backbiting. But what, which, what is possible is we can appro- approach that father who has authority upon the son and then say that, look here, your son is doing this kind of wrong, so save him. Or a person comes in marriage, asking for marriage, uh, how is this person, is this person good, uh, how is his qualities in that uh, region, in that place, then we can, uh, we can explain and we can exp- we have to express what do we know about that particular person. Fatima bin Tehubesh radiallahu anha, she comes to Nabi alayhi salam and she says, Ya Rasulullah, I have heard two proposals from two people, uh, what should I do? Nabi alayhi salam says, these two people, one person, he is a bankrupt person, he is not yet, he is not yet stable in taking care of you. The second person, he is always hitting the women and he, he, he has a quality of hitting women, so you keep away from both of them. So Nabi Alayhi Salaam explained to Fatima bin Shaykhubesh radiallahu anha and said that do not get married to them, why? Because these qualities are there in them. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu, uh, he had a dispute with his wife, then certain people came and asked, what is happening between you and your wife, tell us, let us, uh, tell us also. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu said, how can I expose what is the wrong of my wife to you? It is not correct. So afterwards, however, that marriage did not happen, it broke away. But afterwards, those same, very same people, they came back and asked, now she is not your wife, now tell us what are the wrongs, or what was the wrong, what was the problem between you and your wife. He said, how can I speak about a, 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 a woman who is not in my nikah, it is not up upon me, she is not in my nikah, I cannot speak bad about her. About her. So in both the uh, conditions, Abdullah bin Umar kept himself away from speaking bad about that particular woman. So it is upon us also, let us make the dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this quality to keep away from all these sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. Dua.